Formulas in Excel all pretty much have the same general structure. They consist of operands followed by operators. An operand is a quantity on which an operation is performed. In other words, a value, its references, named ranges, function name. Operators are the symbols that combine the operands. Symbols that include but are not limited to your exponents, multiplication symbol there, division, addition, subtraction, greater than, less than, and equal signs. All of our formulas, all of our calculations are governed by the order of operations. Very simple formula here, 6 plus 5 times 3. Go ahead, figure it out, and how many of you got the answer? 33. If you got 33, you would be absolutely wrong. 33 is not the answer to this formula. The real answer is 21. Now, if you don't understand the order of operations, or you learned it many, many years ago like I did and you've forgotten it, you're probably saying, Bill, why is the answer not 33, 6 plus 5? The order of operations requires us to perform calculations in multiplication first. So, when we look at this, the first part of the equation that we have to perform is 5 times 3. 5 times 3, 15. Then we add the 6, 15 plus 6 equals 21. The order of operations will also state that if we put a certain part of the equation in parentheses, like we have here, that will take precedence over the multiplication. That will be performed first. So if we write the formula this way, 6 plus 5 is performed first. So 6 plus 5 is 11 times 3. That gives us the answer 33. So let's take a closer look at that order of operations. The order of operations is Things in parentheses are performed first, followed by exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Now, if you have a hard time remembering that, I'm going to give you a great mnemonic device that I learned way, way long time ago, many, many years ago in elementary school, and that is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Now, having said that, I also want you to take note when you're talking about multiplication and division, multiplication and division are given the same importance in the order of operations. They are calculated in order from left to right. Also, addition and subtraction are given the same importance and are also calculated in order from left to right. And I'm going to have some examples of this, so if you don't understand exactly what we're talking about, hang in there with me. We're going to get to that in just a second. In this example, 8 divided by 2 times 3, remember we said our multiplication and our division share the same importance, so it doesn't matter which order they come in, they will be performed in the order from left to right. So, this one, it's 8 divided by 2, that's 4 times 3, my answer is 12. Let's take a look at another one. In this example, we see 5 minus 3 plus 5 times 2. Our subtraction and our addition, again, also share the same importance, and the order that they are performed will be from left to right in the order they appear. However, with this example, our multiplication here, 5 times 2, needs to be performed first because multiplication is higher on our order of operations than either addition or subtraction. So, we perform this first, 5 times 2, that is 10, and then we'll go back here, so 5 minus 3 is 2 plus 10, our answer is 12. In our next example, we'll see that we have a calculation in parentheses. And like we said, in our order of operations, parentheses comes first. So first thing we need to do is 12 divided by 3, that gives us 4. Then multiplication is first. We don't see anything else that's going to cause us to change our order. So we will go from left to right. 5 times, and remember this was 4, so that's 5 times 4 is 20, times 6 is 120, minus 4 gives us the answer of 116. All right, let's look at one more here. And in this one, you'll see we have two calculations in parentheses. And again, we will go from left to right. 12 divided by 3 is 4, much like we had in our last formula. And we next have to go to the next calculation in parentheses. So 6 minus 4 is 2. So 
from left to right, we have 5 times 4, which is 20, times 2 gives us the answer 40. So it's pretty straightforward once you understand the order of operations. Now, let's go ahead and let's take a look at one more example, one that's a little bit more complex and is going to introduce an idea that you're going to need to know later on in our course. Now we have something a little different with this formula. This is what we call a nested formula and it's nested because we have two sets of calculations in parentheses and one is nested inside the other. And when we're working this formula we have to perform the inside nested calculations first. So first thing we will do is 12 divided by 3 and that gives us the answer 4. The next calculation we need to perform is still inside those parentheses and it's 4 times 6 which gives us the answer 24. We still have a set of parentheses and the answer to 24 minus 4 is 20 and we're down to our last set of calculations 5 times 20 which of course gives us 100. And that is how Excel will use the order of operations to calculate this nested formula. Now when you're building a formula in Excel there's a few things I want you to be aware of. One, you will begin all formulas with an equal sign. And the equal sign lets Excel know that you're going to start entering a formula. You can enter the formulas in the active cell. You have to have that cell selected. It's just like I've been saying along. If you want to affect it you have to select it. Press enter to complete the formula. Once you're done with your formula it won't calculate unless you hit the enter to complete it. You can edit formulas in the cell by double clicking on it or you can also press the F2 key. You can also edit formulas from the formula bar. Here's a very simple expense worksheet that I've created in Excel and we want to total up how much we spent for the first quarter. So I'm going to click here in cell E2. This is where I want my totals to be. This is where I'm going to write my formula. And what's the first thing? What did I tell you? We will start with an equal sign. Then we will go ahead, we can put in our first number, 875 plus 875, see I'm getting these from here, plus 875. And when I hit enter, it gives me the answer 2625. And in fact, let's go ahead and let's, in fact, let's do the whole column, format that in the accounting style. Now when that cell is selected, I want you to look up here. Here's our formula in the formula bar. If I want to edit this formula, I can double click on the cell. See that? It opens it up here and I can click or I can use, you can't see my fingers, but I'm using my arrow keys to go back and forth. I can also at any time edit my formula in here. And again, you can't see my hands, but trust me, the F two key on top of your keyboard. I'm clicking that and again it opens up that formula for me. Now that was a very simple basic formula. We created it entering in the values that we wanted to add. A value is just that. It's a specific value that you use in your formula. And quite honestly the way we wrote that formula if we were going to do all of our calculations that way we'd be better off sitting here with a calculator and just typing the numbers in. Excel is much more efficient than that and we're going to go ahead and do that next. We're going to take a look at another worksheet and put in another formula. In this worksheet we're going to try and set the price of these particular items. This column has how much the item cost us and we're going to write a formula here that will calculate how much our prices, what we're going to sell them for. So what we want to do is, again, start with that equal sign, but instead of using the value, which in this case would be $2.15, we're going to use a reference. A reference refers to whatever value is in a particular cell. So we've already put in our equal sign and now we're going to put in that cell reference. Now I could type in B2 and notice when I do that I get this blue 
line around that cell. That's kind of a check. That lets me know, hey, that's the cell that I'm referencing. But if you don't like the type, I can also do it this way. I can simply click on that cell. And it also creates that reference to that cell. And you see I get the little flashing, uh, I like to call it the dancing ants around that cell. That's creating that reference. So our formula now references this cell. So we're going to say equals B2. And we're going to multiply times 2. And let's add. So we're going to double, we're going to double our profits here, double our cost, and add a little bit more. Let's say $2.50 per item, which gives us the grand total of $6.80. Now, when I go ahead and click on that again, we see there's my formula, B2, that cell reference, times 2 plus 2.5. Now, the benefit of doing that is, if I go ahead, I click in here, and let's say that this value changes. Let's make it, let's say the cost went up. We'll make that instead of 215, let's say it went up to 283. When that changes, it automatically changed this because it wasn't set on a hard value, it was set on this reference. Whereas with our other formula, if one of these changes, let's say the landlord up my rent, that still registers it as if it were 875. So you want to use those references wherever you can. And if you remember, and this is one of the great things, remember back from an earlier lesson when we talked about using that autofill, click on my little fill handle here, double click, and it copied my formula down and did all those calculations for me very quickly. Using that reference, that B2, tells Excel, perform this part of the calculation against whatever's in the column one to the left in column B, which is why when I move down here, it's still column B, but now it is again one to the left and so on. Now watch what happens if I go ahead and I copy this formula and I'm gonna copy this way and paste over here. See that it still thinks you're only going over one cell because that's what the formula was. Take the value in one to the left of me multiply it times 2 plus 2.5. But that's not to say that I can't do this. Because now I started it here and we told it, now go ahead and use the value to the left. And if I copy it here and paste it here, same thing, 2 to the left. And that's your basics of using references in Excel. Let's go ahead and let's go back here and let's rewrite our formula here in fact let's just get rid of all of this and tell it equals this plus this plus this and notice how it changes colors that's kind of cool i like that it really makes it stand out so you really know what you're looking at and now see that my rent went up didn't it and if i change this back to 875 it'll go back down. Although the odds of my rent actually going back down are probably slim to none, but hey, I can dream, can I? One more time, just so you don't forget, please remember to start your formulas with an equal sign. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.